Hey there, Steve here. I hope you're doing well. If you click this video, there's a good chance that you want to learn more about math rock guitar. So a few years ago, I released a, a math rock guitar techniques and music theory guide. It was aimed at giving a structured guide to how to learn math rock guitar. Uh, since then, I've made a number of updates and today I just wanna go through the book, uh, just give some clearer understanding of different sections and how it can help you. Just as a brief side note, I wanna say thank you very much to the patrons that have been supporting the ongoing development of this guide. If you are one of those patrons, Thank you very much. So if you have purchased the guide already via my website, uh, through Teespring or even through Patreon itself, you should have the current edition of the guide in your email box. So please check your spam too, it could be there. If you don't see it there, then please check the description. I've given some instructions of what you may need to do. And if you don't want to watch the rest of this video, if you're already uh, interested in getting this guide, I, I wanna say thank you very much for considering supporting what I do. And you can find relevant links for that down below in the description too, thank you. Now let's get into the geeky details of each section. And I just wanna show what my aims were and how these sections can help you. So the book is divided into three sections. Section one is to help you learn the commonly used techniques by math or guitar. Section two is teaching you some of the basic music theory that I think is useful for learning math rock, for songwriting. Uh, there's also a good generous section on chords in there as well. In the second segment of that section, there's a, a wealth of information about alternative tunings too. Section three is designed to move on from the theory and the techniques themselves and putting that into practice. So giving you tools uh, for songwriting. So starting with section one, the idea here was to give you a guide to the learning the three most prominent techniques that I believe are used in math rock. There's also a section in there as well about the general techniques that you should learn or should know already in order to best assist you in playing math rock. And you could use this as a good guide to see what it is you need to learn. So you could make it a checklist if you wanted to. Each of the techniques contains guidance, pointers, there's lots of different exercises and below each of the exercise you'll see a link and if you click that link it's going to take you to a video example where I play it at a slower speed and then a faster speed so it gives you gives you a good reference if you're not very good at reading uh, you know tablature or notation so moving on to section two we have beginning with a segment on basic music theory that I believe is useful for learning and playing math rock um, I do begin with this little brief introduction about the differences between music notation and music theory because we often even though there's overlap between the two uh, we often think these are the same things and what I'm trying to say in this section is you know you don't need to worry so much about the notation. We're going to be purely talking about music theory. Even if you look at the entire section, there is not a single stave mentioned uh, or notes on a stave mentioned at all in that section. So it's completely possible to learn music theory that you need to know uh, without having to even really look at music notation too much. However, that being said, it's always useful to know a bit of notation, I believe. So like the first section, I've included a list of musical notation things that are going to be useful for you and general music theory terms, things that you should know that are going to assist in playing, not only playing math rock, songwriting, but also for learning songs much quicker. So after learning some basic music theory, there's a section on a wealth of different chords that are often applied in math rock. Um, unlike most books that I've read, uh, they give you this giant list of chords, but they don't really give you any indication of how they work, where you can use them, or even bother giving you any chord progressions. So I wanted to address that in my book, and it was quite difficult to do, but I've given you enough chords, but I didn't want to give you an overwhelming amount of chords. Each of the chords are separated into the different you know, types of chords, and I've also provided explanations, examples, and also some example chord progressions. Uh, uh, for you in that section. So segment B, we're moving on to alternative tunings. We look at two of the most common alternative tunings used in math rock. I've tried to lay out this section in the common questions that you may have in the beginning. Uh, so walking you through um, what string gauges should you be using for these tunings, looking at what these tunings are as a chord basically and why they sound good. And then we move on to look at chords for uh, both of these tunings. 
as well as chords that are used in context, so chords that are actually used in some of the most uh, famous song examples that use these tunings. Uh, after that, I've given you a list of minor and major arpeggios. Uh, these are going to help you craft those like twinkly kind of riffs uh, along with the chords, so make sure you do learn those. And then lastly, I end with some exercises um, in context, so they apply you know, some of the chords and using the arpeggios that you learn in that section as well. And moving on to the last section of this guide, here I wanted to move on from the theory that you've been learning, from the techniques that you've been developing, and try and give you tools that you can use to start writing mathy style ideas. So we begin with a section on something called mastering the neck. So I give you a few methods of how you can learn where the note names are across the neck relatively easily. Then we move on to looking at arpeggios and how we can apply them in a more like a, a math kind of context. So looking at more of um, not conventional melody writing, we'll look at more um, angular styles of melody writing there. And it ends with a section of examples that you can practice using the arpeggios that you just learned. And in the second segment of this section, it's currently what I'm working on, it's strumming, useful strumming patterns uh, within different time signatures. Currently there's four, four time in that section. I am working on other time signatures. I'm almost done with three, four, and then I'm going to move on to five, four after that. So in any updated versions of the guide, you know, they, they will be in there. So like anyone, if you pick up the guide now, you're going to get the updated guide versions later on. So do not worry about that. Like, like I said in previous videos, if you are a student, if you are someone who's struggling, struggling financially, and you do want to get hold of this guide, please just reach out to me at my email address and I'll send you a copy of the guide. I don't want to cause you any financial stress. I see this as, you know, yeah, I spent a lot of time researching this, making this book, and I'm using it as a means to, you know, monetary support this channel, if that's if that's the correct word. And hopefully, like I've said before, do this thing, do this YouTube thing full time. Okay, so there we have it. Hopefully a structured guide there for you for learning math rock. If you do have any questions, leave those down below in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you would like to purchase a copy and continue supporting the uh, ongoing creation of this guide, I do work on it uh, you know, a few times a week, putting in those hours, uh, then you can do that on over at Patreon. Uh, you can use it as a one-time means just to buy the book as well if you wanted to. The other links are on my website and also on Teespring. Do be aware on Teespring, I cannot get your email from that, so I did put put a note in the guide. Uh, please, if you get the guide, look at the first page, there'll be an instruction there of an email address. Just email me an update email and I'll use that update email to send you any updates of the guide. As always, thank you very much for the support. I'm hoping that this guide has been helping you for those who have purchased it already. And for those who are looking to learn math, hopefully this will be a lovely structured guide for you. Thanks for watching if you're still here. Really appreciate any of the support and see you in the next video. Goodbye.